Hello, this is the uh, very quick, or well, sort of quick, watercolour uh, we're doing today. Um, and it's on very um, textured watercolour paper, more textured than I usually use. It's 300 GSM. You can just see it's um, there's some rough trees in the background, very quick. Uh, some water there in the middle and some trees there in the foreground with a bit of brush as well. So, uh, yeah, the trees there, um, the foreground there, some water. We'll um, start off by thoroughly wetting the paper with some clean water. Really wet that paper. It's, uh, as I said, it's a very textured paper. Um, I'm not uh, too used to working on, on a texture this, um, this rough. We're just going over it again with a bit of water there. And now we're gonna get some uh, cobalt blue and we're going uh, from the top on that very wet um, paper. And we'll bring it through. Bring it right through. So I don't want it as heavy um, at the top. I want it a bit lighter at the bottom, but in places I will darken it up near the bottom, just in places, just you can see it's starting to dry there. So I'm just going to put a bit of cobalt blue down on the bottom. But before that, I'll put some um, yellow ochre just up in the sky, just to give the sky a little bit of tone. There we go. I'll just thicken that up a bit. Make it a bit stronger. That'll do. So just adding a little bit more blue in this um, area down here, this bottom area. Just cobalt blue again. Just a tiny, tiny bit of yellow ochre in there. Not much. So with a, um, a clean uh, damp brush, not wet, but uh, washed out in water and dried off with a paper towel, but the brush is still damp, we are just lifting some paint. And we'll go a little bit higher and do that as well, just under the yellow ochre. So there we go, uh, just uh, I put a bit more cobalt blue there. I'm just spreading that cobalt blue out a bit. Let's put a bit there, just on the bottom area. And there we are, I've just painted in the background there, some trees, and I put some reflection down in there as well. And I again, I've just um, 
I've washed out a brush. This is um, just a flat edge brush. I've just washed it out in clean water, dried the brush off with a towel and just, just running it through in some places here. So those, um, those trees in the background, it's just a mixture of raw umber and uh, rather um, there's yellow ochre in there first and then raw umber and then some Australian dark leaf green. And I'm just going over again with some Australian dark leaf green just in places. Not, not, I don't want to cover the whole thing up. I'm sorry you missed uh, seeing me paint the first part of this, but... I uh, forgot to put record on, so I'll be honest. So just darkening up just in some areas, very lightly. And I'll just uh, blend that in a bit so it doesn't look like it's just been plumped there. That's what I want, just to, just to blend it out a bit, just to let it blend into the water. Um, just painting some yellow ochre just to get the foundation of a bit of a, uh, a foreground here. I want this foreground in two, two parts, just split in the middle virtually. Or you could just have it on one side if you wanted to. So um, that was uh, yellow ochre. I'm going over now with raw sienna. Putting a bit of dark leaf green in there, or rather, um, uh, sap green, beg your pardon. Bit of sap green in there.
some raw umber. Just using some um, uh, paints grey, I'm just putting in some areas um, that will carry on from the bottom of the tree when we eventually put the tree in there. I've got um, one tree on the left hand side and two trees on the right hand side, just right in the foreground there, which I, which I am yet to put in obviously. Bringing, bringing it through here, although I have a suspicion we'll be ca uh, covering that up a fair bit with, um, with different, uh, different paint and texture through there anyway, but I just try things as I go and then uh, sometimes I end up covering it up again because um, you need to paint to your own style and as you go, you find your, your painting will evolve. And if you need to make some changes that you think will look good, or if the changes you are making start to look good, then keep going with it. So this is A3 Reeves, R-E-V-E-S, -E -E Reeves watercolour paper. It's a very heavy texture as well, and 300 GSM. The GSM is the weight of the paper. You can get different textured 300 GSM watercolour paper. But this is a very, um, a very heavy or rough textured paper that I'm using today, which I'm not used to using. I prefer um, a medium texture. I don't like the paper too smooth, but just a medium texture. But this is a, a little bit heavier than what I'm used to, this texture that I'm using, or that um, I'm painting on, on this paper. So just going over that um, back area there again with some darker dark leaf green, I'm just using the uh, bottom corner of a tube of paint just to scratch in some illusions of grass. Some of this I'll be going back over again.
Okay, so that's uh, that's okay, but I want to go over some of that because I want more uh, some darker colour in areas along there. But I will leave some of what we've done. That's um, the Payne's Grey by Art Spectrum that I'm, I'm using. I'm about to use um, some more of that. Starting on this tree on the left-hand side in the foreground here. I don't want any foliage on, on these at all. This one's sort of a dead looking uh, remnants of trees. All right, so we'll put a bit of white gouache down that tree in places eventually. A bit, a bit later on in the video, we'll do that. Just getting um, this Payne's Grey and just running it down the hill there so the tree looks like it's part of the foreground. All right, here we go with these trees on the other side. Using um, Payne's Grey again, there's a little bit of um, raw sienna mixed in as well.
It's getting these uh, little random branches coming out in places. And we might create just some random small dead tree coming out from uh, the side of the tree we just painted, just on an angle there. There we go. I'm happy with that. We'll just put more of a dividing, just a tiny little bit of a, um, a definition line. You can see uh, with those trees right in the background there. You don't have to, but I think sometimes it can look good to do that. So first of all, we'll do that by, um, again, wetting the brush, drying it out, and, uh, and then running it through where we want uh, more of a definition. And then we'll get just the tiniest bit of white gouache and um, just uh, put more of a definition line in, but very only very likely though. Right now, just painting the second tree on the right-hand side using uh, paints gray and some raw sienna. want all this to blend into the foreground. Wetting the paper quite a bit, letting that uh, paint's grey just flow into the water. Just with that brush there, just to bring more of a line through there. And I'll put a little bit of that um, white gouache, just a little fine line in there as well eventually. And we might change to a flat brush, a flat bevel brush fairly soon, it might help.
There we go, just like that. So using a flatter brush, just wash it out, dry it off with a towel, bringing the damp brush through. You can see it lifting off some paint there. That's good. And we'll put a little bit of that white wash through eventually. Pretty happy with that. So I'm just painting on some uh, more cobalt blue onto this water here, just to give the water some movement. You can see how I'm doing that there. And I'm connecting the wave or the ripples rather, just connecting them occasionally. Just some more grasses in there. Still got some more work to do on the water when that dries. <coughs> It's all right. Try putting a bit of a bird in the sky up here. That'll do. And now we're nearly uh, nearly finished. We want a bit more 
um, definition on the water. So uh, we'll be putting some um, cerulean blue in at the front. I'm just putting some white gouache on these trees right now. So yeah, in the water we'll be putting some cerulean blue in, in places, and also a little bit of Australian dark leaf green. And even in the water we'll put some um, Payne's grey for a little bit of shadow coming off those black trees just into the water in the foreground. So on these black trees now, this is just white gouache. Just, um, just putting it on in places. These fairly dead looking trees in the foreground. Perhaps those trees in the foreground have been subjected to flood water and they didn't do too well. Just touching up down the bottom of the tree, just blending this tree into the foreground. Just a little bit of um, white gouache running through in some of these areas just here. Just a finest little line there. Now remember we've got some cerulean blue to put in the uh, in the water in the foreground of the water and we also have some Australian dark leaf green to also put into the water so this is the uh, cerulean blue now Just creating the slightest ripples here in the water. Don't get the mixture too strong. It will fade back a bit, however, but that's okay. Some cerulean blue just through there quickly. Just a bit.
that's the Australian dark leaf green. It's just a fairly watered down mixture. So I'm putting some of that into the water. So that green is just carried out um, from the background and we've got some coming through from the side. And also we need to add the Payne's Grey in as well from the, those uh, dead trees in the foreground. We need a bit of shadow coming from those. Just darken up just at the foot of these uh, trees in the background here, just um, very quickly. It won't stand out like that, that will fade back. Oh, it'll stand out, a, it'll stand out a bit compared to those back hills, but um, it'll fade it back more than what it is. Here's a bit more white gouache coming in here now. to add some highlights in some places, that's all. So here's the shadow I was telling you about. This is just some Payne's Grey. Um, and I'm just gonna run it through from both sides from these trees, just in the, in the water here at the front. And I just wanted to blend in a little bit. Has some foreground shadow there from those trees. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. Just fixing up here in some areas. I need to sign it, so I've chosen this area around the side because I can't really find anywhere else to sign it. So, um, this looks like the best spot just along the side. I hate that when I go to sign and my paint is too dry or the brush is too dry. So I've just uh, put some more paint on the brush and some, a little bit more water. That's better just to finish that signature. Okay, I can pull it, pull the tape away and, um, and show you what I've got. And then we'll do the final photograph um, at the end of the video, which you will see the final reveal photograph. Um, just before I take that tape off, just quickly darken up in some spots through here because the paint does fade back times keeps fading back don't want to cover it all up 
So that's good. That'll fade back um, even uh, more than what's on there as well. So we'll take this tape off, pulling away from the paper. Pulling away from the paper. Same again with the bottom, just pull away. And just one more piece left. I can already see where I just want to make a couple of changes. So I'll do that right now, very quickly. We're essentially at the end of the video, but I just want to make these changes quickly. Just a couple of very minor changes. Here we go. Just a bit of raw sienna on the tree here. And as it uh, turns out, we'll be putting uh, a little bit more white gouache down on the base of the trees. That's some um, yellow ochre just being moved through there as well. Just to give it some variation of colour. So yellow ochre to give a variation in colour through here a bit. All right, there it is. That's our um, final uh, reveal. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope uh, you learned something. We learned together, having fun together. Please subscribe to the channel where we've got lots of watercolours to do. We'll be doing another water scene next time and we'll get into some line and wash watercolour as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.